Hi, it's Alaska Granny. The election is over. Like it or not, we need to make the best of it and move forward because that's what we do as preppers. We get ready to handle what could be next. So today, plug in your crock pot, toss in some bacon, some pinto beans, a can of Rotel or tomatoes with chilies, fill it up with water, plug it in on low and let it go for eight hours and you'll have time now to go through your supplies and make sure that you have an adequate supply of these cheap must-have prepping supplies. Make sure that you have lots of garbage bags. Lots of us know that we need to have plenty of big black garbage bags and you want to make sure that you get the heavy-duty contractor bags because they are absolutely the handiest uh, garbage bags that you can have. You can make all kinds of things out of them. You can use big black plastic bags for so many things. I'll put a link to a video I made about lots of ways that you can use a big black plastic bag. Now make sure you also have a supply of tall kitchen drawstring bags because these are what you're going to need if you need to use your emergency toilet. These are the perfect size to use in your five gallon bucket that makes into an emergency toilet and if something goes wrong that you need to use a porta potty you want to make sure that you have plenty of these. I'll put a link to a video I made about how to use a portable toilet and hopefully you will never have to but in case you do it's certainly an important thing to know. Take an inventory of your cordage. Do you have some heavy duty paracord? Do you have some nylon rope? And don't forget things like just white cotton string and jute twine. There's all kinds of different cordages that have lots of different uses, whether you want to use them to build a shelter or you want to use something like jute twine to tie up in your garden or even as a fire starter. Have you been using up your zip ties? Maybe you need to stock up on some more. Zip ties can be extremely handy. They come in all different types of sizes and strengths. Don't just buy the least expensive ones at the Dollar Tree. The zip ties from the Dollar Tree are handy and useful but there are certain instances when you might need something that's super heavy duty and these aren't going to cut it so get some extra heavy duty zip ties as well make sure you have a good supply of tape plus if you've had it set away in your prepping supplies for a few years some climates the tape just doesn't last if you live in an extremely hot or dry climate the tape can just turn into brittles and dust so check over that you have some duct tape, make sure you have some black electrical tape, and scotch tape is also handy for so many things that we need to do. So make sure that you have a wide variety of the different kind of tapes that you use on a regular basis. Do you have a supply of candles? You should have everything from votive candles that you can drop into a jar or a glass dish and for a little bit of light all the way up to a tall 80 hour candle that you can even find for a dollar at the Dollar Tree. These can actually burn for 80 hours. You can find them at all different kinds of stores. Sometimes they have a religious picture on them and they can burn for many, many hours, many, many days. In an emergency situation, you're not burning candles 24 hours a day or even all night. So you wanna have a selection of them and even the big tall ones can last for weeks at a time because you're only using it for a few hours a day. Whether you're lighting your candles or starting fires, make sure you have an ample supply of matches of the long utility lighters and a nice selection of small lighters. How do you know how much fuel is still left in your lighter? You can shine a light through it and you can see where the fuel is. Also, if you're storing your lighters away for long-term storage, put a piece of tape over them so that they don't evaporate and they actually last longer that way. We may not always want to use candles and you can find solar lights that are very inexpensive even sometimes from the Dollar Tree. They come with a little tab that you pull to activate it but don't pull it until you're ready to use it. They're already fully charged so you can put these away with your emergency gear and then in an emergency if it's nighttime you can get it out, pull the tab and it's going to work. If you've already pulled the tab it'll run down and then in the dead of night if the power goes out, you don't have a way to use these until you can charge them up again. I've had great luck with these, even in the dead of winter, in the deepest snow in Alaska. I've used these in my yard. They light up the trails and walkways, 
and give a few hours of light even in the dead of winter. I've also found that they're sturdy and they've continued to light the way for more than a year. So they were well worth the dollar. Everybody needs several flashlights and the batteries that go with them. Don't buy the very cheapest flashlights because they're just not going to last. You can also look and see if you can find the ones that have a USB rechargeable port. That's my favorite flashlight. Make sure you at least have several flashlights and that you spread them around so you have them in handy places. We never know when the lights are going to go out. Check that you have them in your car, in your get home bag, and in your bug out bag. It may be winter now, but it will be spring again. If you have the chance to pick up some seeds, get them. You can store them in an airtight container and they'll last for several years. I have some stored in a Ziploc bag. I have some stored in a food storage container. And I've also stored some airtight in a cookie tin. Now your seeds are going to last longer if they're airtight, but they're still not going to last forever. So don't buy some seeds and then put them away forever and count on them being there for you when you need them. You need to still rotate these through with fresh seeds as you can have them. It's nice to have seeds a year or two, even three years ahead, but make sure that you're rotating them so that if you are in an emergency and you have to grow your own food, that your seeds are still going to be viable. Buy heirloom seeds when you can get them and make sure that you're learning what plants can grow in the area where you live. If you live in a very cold climate like I do, there are a lot of things that just won't grow here. The growing season is not long enough. So figure out what people grow in your area and stock up on those seeds. If it's something like radishes that you're never going to eat anyway, it doesn't make sense to grow foods you don't want any more than it makes sense to buy food you don't want to take up your pantry space. Learn what grows where you live, the foods that you like, and those are the seeds that you should be stockpiling. There are a lot of things that we need as preppers and it's always a great idea to be taking time to rotate through, check your supplies, see if your things have all of the components that they need, that you still know how to use things and they're useful to you. If you find things that you don't want anymore or are clutter, you don't know how to use them, declutter them, use that space for things that you do want and you will use. Just because you bought something for prepping 10 years ago doesn't mean it's something you still need to hang on to today. Then it becomes hoarding, it's clutter, and it um, takes up all the space, not only in our house, but also in our mind that we're trying to figure out how to use all these things. If you can't figure out a way to use something and it isn't useful anymore, get rid of it, pass it on, and replace it with something that is better and more useful to you. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel. Teddy, <laughs> it's all over your face.